I'm starting a new series on obscure-based books. Names like De Maestra, Carlyle, and Schmidt are frequently mentioned on our side. These men have great ideas, and they deserve the dozens of live streams about them. Yet there are hundreds of authors out there lost to history. Their books are not readable online, or they may be prohibitively expensive to buy. There is a need on the right for increased awareness of our literary history. The median of books Americans read each year is four, and I bet that these four are not very based. Kenneth Roberts, born 1885, died 1957, was a lieutenant in the intelligence section of the American Expeditionary Force Siberia in the Russian Civil War of 1918 to 1920. The AEF's inaction in Siberia failed to combat the growing Bolshevik forces or to protect American interests. In the early 1920s, the author became the European correspondent for the Saturday Evening Post. He had creative freedom to write about whatever he wished. At the time, right-wing movements were starting to gain more strength in Italy and Germany. He was the first journalist to substantially research this developing fascisti movement in Italy. If books were dedicated to the person or persons that made them possible, all books on the fascist movement should be dedicated to all reds and pinks, to parlor, bedroom, bath and gutter Bolsheviks, to communists, anarchists, syndicalists, and extreme socialists, to government ownership cranks, and to fanatics on the subject of state-assisted cooperative societies, to organized minorities and legislative blocs, and advocates of class legislations, to legislators who impose fool taxation on the people, and who waste the nation's income on paternalistic schemes and reckless appropriations for vote-getting and pork-barrel measures, to soft-spined and soft-headed men and women who scream for the elimination of the army and navy with no thought of the nation's security, to all strikers who would imperil the nation's interest for their own selfish and immediate gain, and to all radicals, subverts, aliens, and morons who work for themselves first, last, and all the time, and for their country, never. These persons would deserve the dedications, not because the fascist movement has a strong appeal for them, but because without their assistance, it couldn't have existed. As a matter of fact, it has about as much appeal for them as a sulfuric acid shower bath would have for a beautiful girl. It not only cramps their style severely, but it reduces their style to the vanishing point. The reason I chose Black Magic as the first book in my series of based books is because it is the first mention of Mush Dash Man's 1923 Beer Hall Putsch anywhere in an English language book. Of the 250 pages, only 26 are written about the Beer Fascisti of Bavaria in Germany. Of the 26 pages, there are endless complaints about peasant Bavarian culture, thick German ankles, and hair-raising traffic regulations. Ten pages are written about the Hofblau House and the endless propensity for Dunkel, dark, and Hull, light, beer. The last ten pages of the chapter discuss the Bavarian National Socialist Workers' Party and its leader, who I will call by the letter H for YouTube censorship. I'm quoting what the author says and his personal opinions. H is an ordinary sort of person in many ways, and in other ways he isn't so ordinary. He has, for example, an intense aversion to having his picture taken. He grants interviews to English newspapers for $25 in funding contributions to his party. He would win the prize belt for talking. Whenever he takes a firm stand on top of a table or beer keg, every beer drinker in the audience violently coughs out, by God, he's right. Mr. Roberts details H's theory about an international group topic which would get me banned off YouTube. I'm sure I don't have to say any more here. Roberts states the audience reacts to Mr. H's theory during the beer hall speeches by saying certain names and prominent individuals in response and their association with wealth. Mr. H also details the complaints against the Versailles Treaty. Roberts argues that people of many widespread political beliefs were drawn to this organization. He describes the rough men called Sturmtruppen with their Guminuchel clubs, calling them green shirts as an interesting historical anecdote. He further describes the widely known symbol of the Bavarian Hakenkreuz, which is uh, unmentionable on YouTube. Roberts details their fist fights in Munich at cafes and bars. At the conclusion of the chapter, Mustache Man's movement is described in the past tense. 
Roberts argues that Mustache Man did not have common sense, that he blamed a certain group too much instead of the destroyed German economy. Mustache Man also pushed too hard for government ownership, and therefore did not have as large a following as he could have. Perhaps if H had followed Kenneth Roberts's conservative sensibilities and advice, he would have won the popular election in 1924 Weimar Germany. Mr. Roberts states that fascism, however, is common sense applied to government. Common sense used in any situation, he says, requires directness, honesty, simplicity, and fair dealing. And it sometimes necessitates the use of force for the defeat of brutality, an occasional ignoring of the law in the interests of decency when the law is too weak. For the rest of the book, outside of the Bavarian movement, he dissects Italy, arguing that this fascisti movement saved the country of Italy from communism and financial ruin. He brings up and invented the infamous quote that Mussolini makes the trains run on time. Most of this section in the first third fixates on the Italian rail system under both fascisti and red management. Roberts details Mussolini's seizure of power in political operations. He is a journalist, and so his subjective bias and generalizations easily show through. The remaining third of the book is about American politics and its own likelihood of developing a dictator. Mr. Roberts is a conservative, and he laments about the weakness of Americans encountering increasing federalism. Remember that this book was published eight years before FDR took office in 1932, and that conservatism in 1924 is drastically different from our own modern movement of conservatism. These sections are interesting, but highly similar to other conservative books written at the time, such as Philip Wiley's Generation of Vipers and The Roosevelt Myth by John Flynn. These authors are dissatisfied with growing federalization of government and declining American conservatism. There are two meta points I would like to make now. The first is that this author could not have known the impact of the events he was witnessing. At the time of Black Magic's publication in 1924, Mustache Man was in prison writing a book that would be much more successful, even though it's not as critically praised today. Kenneth Roberts was an American conservative and highly controversial in his own comments and worldview in his lifetime. I hope this video has shown you how American conservatives reacted, at least, to the far right in 1924. The reaction is a form of sensible centrism, which was ultimately defeated by FDR and his New Deal. The tone in the book speaking about fascism is highly sardonic, and he does not take the German movement nearly as seriously as the Italian one. The second meta point now is that the book is impossible to find online. The author died 66 years ago, and his opinions on immigration and powerful groups mean he was quietly erased from history. He does not receive credit anywhere about his very famous quote about Mussolini making the trains run on time, which nearly every student with basic history knowledge knows. Kenneth Roberts is buried under a mountain of secondary and tertiary literature on the topic. He is a sensible centrist forgotten by history for having the wrong opinions. Thank you for watching this video. This is my first serious attempt to produce content and will develop better editing and production quality over time as the channel grows and finds its voice. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe for future content. Any feedback, negative or positive, is welcomed. If I can leave you with one point, the only thing I ask is that you go to a used bookstore, find something, or anything, published before 1950, to see how people viewed the world differently. These books, here and now, are being lost to history, edited or cancelled. They are too valuable to forget. Even if you only own one old book, that is still a remnant of the past that will survive into the future due to your efforts. Thank you, and have a nice day.